Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's the Illuminati, Matic, Matic, Matic. It's the illest bird in the land. Welcome back to Ill Blur. Matic was one of those. Thank you so much for commenting, liking, subscribing. Let's get into today's new video. Today's new video is episode seven Dreams and Madness of Ahsoka. So, uh, actually, this episode starts off in an interesting fashion. I like that we see the Star Wells have reached the end of their actual journey. Uh, because they're very uh, nomadic in a sense. They, they travel across the galaxy. Uh, and literally, we see uh, both the characters have issues with one another. We see Ahsoka feeling one way. We see Hawaiian feeling another way on how to make an essay game plan to figure out where is Sabine Ring. Now, what I like about this is that they have their differences. We see Ahsoka said, no, we need to get out the Star Wheel eventually. We cannot stay inside this actual living creature. Uh, pretty much, uh, Hawain, the Jedi droid, is like, no, we need to stay inside this creature. We don't know what's out there because we're inside this living organism, right? Um, differences. I like that the characters are having a difference between others. Even though they're the main characters, they're having their differences, their issues. Also, in this episode, we see General Hera take the stand. Due to her insubordination and her recklessness and also being rebellious. And I love that she actually made it a point to point out that Thrawn is going to be an imminent threat. Yes, Morgan is working with him, but this is ruining the infrastructure of what we call the New Republic. And this is what I like about her. Her is speaking her truth. She's letting it be known that Morgan is also going to be a problem because she's accessory to Admiral Thrawn. Uh, but who comes to her A, CP3PO. I was like, wow! I was like, what? Wow. <laughs> I was not expecting this. I was like, oh, I thought for sure we were going to see like Princess Leia or someone from Princess Leia's console to come to, uh, you know, defend General Hera while she's in the courtroom. But that's not the case. I was wrong. <laughs> and that's okay. All right. So I do like that. We see that. We also see that General Hera has evidence because CP3PO brings evidence to the courtroom and the politician that didn't necessarily care for her is furious. He's like, how does she get the evidence and how is she able to do this? Hera was able to, uh, how I say finesse <laughs> her way to get evidence to figure out what was going on. Thanks to princess Leia, most likely, uh, very interesting. I like that Hera is taking a stand for her friends but also the in imminent threat of actual Admiral Thrawn. Also, what I like about this episode is Thrawn. Thrawn, for him to be a villain, he's very calculated, very tactical. Uh, he knows the risk and the rewards when it comes to his stormtroopers. Uh, we see him use the Great Mothers to contact, not necessarily contact, to figure out, I should say, where is Ahsoka? And they find out where's her location because she cuts off the actual signal. I was like, wow, <laughs> Ahsoka's being tactical. She's, she's kind of got the Anakin going on. <laughs> and I also forgot to mention, she does some training as well. We see her uh, do training and we see the final recordings of Anakin Skywalker pretty much uh, telling her different things like different uh, speeches and what you should do as a Jedi and all that stuff. So it seems like she has forgiven Anakin, even though she's abandoned Anakin in the Clone Wars. I do like that perspective. Let's get to <laughs> back to Ezra and also Sabine Ring. So um, pretty much Sabine does get contacted by Ahsoka with the Force and also Ezra, but now they're on the move because they're with this nomadic hermit crab species that lives on this wasteland planet. 
but they're getting attacked by the mercenaries that were hired. And I mean, I love that we see uh, Sabine use her Mandalorian training <laughs> to take out the uh, mercenaries <laughs> while Ezra is uh, steering the actual vehicle that they're in. We also see the peaceful inhabitants of the hermit crab species literally defending themselves from the mercenaries. Even though they're peaceful people, <laughs> they was putting up a fight too. I was like, wow, they putting up a fight. Also in this episode, we see Ahsoka uh, taking a risk. They finally get out of the debris and everything. And we see her exit the actual Jedi spacecraft and Huang is flying it. She tells Huang, fly this craft. You're going to be the diversion pretty much to get the stormtroopers off our backs. But when she gets on the planet, she comes across Bayline. And we see her and Bayline fight for quite a bit. And then what happens is pretty much uh, Huang comes to her aid. I mean, the droids are saving the day, y'all. Droids are the goat this episode. <laughs> they coming to save, all right? Uh, and I like that we also see uh, Bayline, and I forgot to mention, in Shin Hati part ways. Uh, their paths are too different. We see uh, Bayline is going a different path from his student. Shin Hati looks disappointed too. I was like, dang, your master abandoning you. The irony, right? We we see the, uh, the same thing that happened to Ahsoka and also Anakin is happening, but this time it's the master abandoning his student. Shin Hati looks hurt, all right? I'm not going to lie to you guys. I said, dang. She been with this man for quite a while, you know what I'm saying? And for him to abandon her, I mean, she he felt like a father figure to her, like how Anakin and, and Qui-Gon to some degree. I see that relationship dynamic as well, too. And I said, man, I know that had to hurt. But also in this episode, we see some more action, all right? We see uh the stormtroopers and Shin Hati appear in Ezra. And also Sabine Reen fight the stormtroopers. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And I love that Sabine was like, hey, you need a lightsaber? She's at telling Ezra. Ezra was like, no. <laughs> Ezra was like, I got the force. I got the force. <laughs> and Ezra is using the force to fight off the enemies. And I love that Sabine sends out the lightsaber. Then she uses her Mandalorian training. Uh, and I like the combination between the two. I thought that's a really cool approach. Like, hey, when I'm not using my blasters, pull out the lightsaber. <laughs> and I love when Shin Hati is fighting Ezra because she's trying to stab him. She's trying to cut him. Ezra like, <laughs> get that out of here. I got the force. <laughs> and I love that. Also, we see Ahsoka finally reaching Ezra and also uh, saving Reen. <laughs> and we see the stormtroopers back out of it because uh, General Thrawn, excuse me, Admiral Thrawn, Mason happened where he said, hey, tell my troops to come back, the stormtroopers, and retreat. Uh, we see that they're happily reunited together, all three of them. And I got to say, this episode was action-packed. A lot, nice amount of action. I like what they did with Ahsoka. We see her Jedi training take off. We see Anakin again, but as a projection. Uh, overall, I thought this was a really cool episode. Um, I like what they did with Hera in this episode. Uh, even the Great Mothers. Uh, the differences with Morgan and also Admiral Thrawn, I forgot to mention too. But it's a blur living in the world, guys. Have you seen episode seven of Ahsoka, guys? You tell me in the comments, guys. It's a blur living the world, guys. <laughs>